All right guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. In this video, I wanna talk about the differences between cooked and raw animal products. So let's just start off by me saying that I'm not recommending that you eat anything raw. I'm gonna tell you my own personal experiences and you can use your own discernment and judgment to decide what you wanna put into your mouth, whether it be cooked food or raw food. Personally, however, I've experimented with a handful of not only cooked uh, animal foods, but raw animal foods as well. The raw animal foods not only digest better, they keep you incredibly satiated in comparison to cooked animal foods. So let's just talk for, let's just look at raw eggs first and foremost. Raw eggs, when I first started consuming them, tasted horrible. I didn't like it. The, you know, I didn't like the texture. I didn't really have an issue drinking them because, you know, for the last 10 to 12 years, I've drank a handful of nasty tasting stuff, black seed oil, um, certain allergies like bladder rack, you name it. So throwing an egg in my mouth is easy. Slamming it down. But I didn't really like the actual taste of the egg when I would break the yolk in my mouth. I'm sure you guys can hear my loud, obnoxious refrigerator in the background. So, long story short, I didn't really like the taste of them at first, but I really enjoyed the way that they made me feel. Raw eggs gave me energy, mental clarity, determination, verbal fluency. Let me just grab Luna. It was a really good experience. So one thing that you'll find, you guys, come on, Luna, is that if you find something that doesn't taste good, that's actually really good for you, that makes you feel good, if you keep consuming it regardless of the barrier of taste, there's a good chance that you'll end up desiring that food and you'll end up craving it. So right now, I actually enjoy the taste of raw eggs. They taste like cream to me. And the taste of a raw egg is largely determined by its quality. So if you're consuming conventional raw eggs, they're probably not going to taste very good. The ones with the really bright yellow yolks and the white shell. So, long story short, it's very interesting how raw eggs... I'm sure you guys can hear Luna down there. Raw eggs satiate me. They make me feel incredibly grounded. It's a completely different experience in comparison to cooked eggs, which more often than not give you gas. They don't digest very well. A lot of people have bloating issues with eggs. And more often than not, when people consume cooked eggs, they're mixing it with salt and pepper and spinach, and they're making omelets, and they're doing this, that, and the other. They're putting cheese on it, and they're cooking it in vegetable oils and all this crap. So I'm sure you can hear Luna now chasing the cat. They have this little game that they play. So, again, there's a stigma between behind raw eggs. There, on the other hand, is a culturally accepted view of omelets and poached eggs and fried eggs and eggs cooked in bacon fat and this, that, and the other. We've kind of, to a large extent, got things backwards, folks. So at this point, I'll eat some cooked eggs here and there. Don't get me wrong. I just recently had some uh, soft-boiled eggs uh, last night. But I'm consuming 90%, maybe 85 to 90% of my eggs in the raw state because I like the way they make me feel. I actually feel some deep bioavailability going on with the raw eggs, and I feel like they're like just like absorbing right into my system. So although I don't necessarily enjoy the taste of raw eggs as much as cooked eggs, because cooked eggs taste good, I do, however, enjoy it, and I do, however much more preferred the way that I feel after raw eggs. That's the thing about raw animal foods, you guys. You feel much better, at least I do, and everyone I've talked to, you feel so much more grounded, you feel so much more satiated and fulfilled after you've eaten animal products raw. Whether that be beef, whether that be fish, whether that be oysters. I know people who even consume raw um, uh, scallops. 
I know people who eat raw pastured chicken. I've never done that. But I know people who do. So I've consumed cooked beef liver. And I've consumed raw beef liver. And the raw beef liver is completely different than cooked beef liver. The availability of it. And what I mean by that is I just, you just feel like you're pulling more out of it when you consume it raw. You just do. Now, I'm sure that has to do with enzymes and a handful of other things. But let's just, you know, when you put, if you put raw beef into your system, let's just put it this way. What usually ends up happening is that you know, the digestion just doesn't feel as good. You feel like you want more and more and more of it. Whereas you can take just a small piece of beef, raw beef, whether it be a muscle meat or an organ, and you can consume it raw. More often than not, that little piece of raw meat satiates you sometimes for hours. Whereas if I cook it, I just want more and more and more. Now, obviously, I can say no to my urges, but I think it's a little strange that my body keeps telling me that I want more, I want more. When it's cooked and had salt put on it and the fat gets browned. This denatures the molecular integrity of the food. Now, I'm not 100% raw, but I'm, I try to consume the majority of my foods raw. I try to. I'm not going to say I'm 100%. I'd say I'm 60, 40, sometimes 90, 10. It depends on the day. It depends on what I have access to as well, as well as the quality, because I'm not going to eat a bunch of raw animal products from, you know, vaccinated animals that were raised on grain and pumped full of hormones, antibiotics, and vaccines. Absolutely not. So I'm not telling you to eat raw animal products. I'm telling you that if you do, you better source your, su your stuff well because there is a risk for contamination and you getting sick. And I have had food poisoning before from uncooked, bad quality or not very good quality animal products when I was first starting to do this and learning everything. So I'm not going to tell you that there's not a risk because there is. I've also had food poisoning before from cooked foods. I don't know if you can hear my cat Dudley tearing around the house. He's insane. So there's a risk in everything. It's just very interesting. I think the biggest difference between cooked and raw is the digestive ease that comes with it. It sits in your stomach very light. You don't get a bunch of gas and bloating, which is highly uncomfortable. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, when I was eating a lot of raw vegan foods and nut pâtés and even salads, the opposite happened to me, and I got a lot of bloating and bad digestion, gas. The vegan diet is synonymous with gas, and it's because you're eating foods, folks, that you're technically not supposed to be eating in that large of quantities. The vegan diet goes against our instincts. I do, however, believe that a vegan diet can be a very beneficial thing if used properly. I'm not the type of ex-vegan that gets on here and just bashes veganism. I'm going to bash dogmatic vegans that bash me because some of the things that you guys say are so illogical and stupid that it makes my mind blow and it gives it blows my mind and it gives me an excuse to make a video. But I'm not going to get on here and say that the vegan diet doesn't have benefit because I've seen it work wonders on people with heart disease, people that were close to me. Hey, Dudley. Maniac. I've seen it work wonders on people with chronic migraines. I've watched someone in my family who had chronic migraines for uh, pretty much her whole life. After about a week on a proper vegan diet, not a junk food vegan diet, the uh, headaches went away. The migraines went away. Inflammation was reduced. Weight was dropped. Better circulation came in to the picture. So again, you know, uh, I still eat plant foods, but a vegan diet at this point. It's just, I had done it for so long that I was starting to run in. It's like my, my tank was on empty. I needed some fat soluble vitamins. And uh, I definitely needed some raw meat, let me tell you. But where was I going with this, you guys? Kind of dovetailed into something else. Let's just stay on point. 
the vegan diet is unnatural is unnatural to a large extent because it's just not what we would be doing out in nature. It's just not. Now I'm not saying that we couldn't set up some type of society where we were vegan and did it right because I do believe that there's probably a chance that we could do this right veganism if we you know you utilized permaculture if we actually used veganic gar uh, gardening and farming. But most vegans aren't doing this. Now they're buying the food from the chemical companies, the people who you know own all the land. And these vegetables and fruits, unfortunately, are filled full of herbicide, pesticide, fungicides, you name it. So, I mean, think about it this way. Let's just look at it this way really quickly. If the grid went down and you only had one day of food left, or you only had one day of food stockpiled in your home, what would you do if you were a vegan? Now, even when I was a vegan, I had contemplated this. And I knew for a fact that if I only had one day of food left, uh, I would be going out and hunting, regardless of my veganism. I always knew that my veganism had limits because I'm not going to die in a survival situation just to say that, hey, you know, plant, you know, I ate plants till I died. No, I'm going to go kill an animal if I have to, to survive. Because me staying on this earth is more important than me dying with a vegan badge on my coffin. No. So what would you do in your city right now or on the outskirts of your city in the open space? What would you do as a vegan? If you had one day of food left and you couldn't go bum stuff from your neighbors and this, that, and the other. You had to go forage stuff from the land. What are you going to do? Eat bark? What are you going to do? Eat leaves? Do you know what leaves are even edible? No, your instincts are going to tell you to go find an animal and slaughter it. Hate to say it. I know that bugs people, but that's the type of world we live in. This world does not revolve around or operate on love and light laws. It does not. This world operates. Earth is a survival of the fittest system, and it is a self-recycling, self-consuming system. It maintains itself through consumption and death and rebirth. When are you going to get it? And a lot of people seem to think that, oh, the plants, they don't, you know, the plants don't feel anything. Are you stupid? We know through copious amounts of suppressed research that plants do not want to be picked. They do not want to be juiced. They do not want to be eaten. We also know that plants are highly conscious. Shamans have known this for thousands of years. Plants are more evolved to a large extent than the animals. Get real. And a lot of these animals eat plants and then convert the plant material into more bioavailable nutrition so that when we eat the flesh of the animals, it's more bioavailable to us. It's a cycle. It's a life and death cycle. It's called the circle of life. All these vegans want to say, oh, blah, blah, blah. You're not, you're not honoring universal law and the law of one and all this other nonsense. What are you even talking about? That's not how the world works. In your study over there, your study over there, consuming your factory, you know, or not your factory farmed, but your monocropped fruits and vegetables with some type of strange superiority complex, like I'm violating universal law or natural order, you're eating foods that were monocropped. That never happens in nature. You want to talk about honoring, uh, you know, natural order, what are you even talking about? You see, there's such a bias with most vegans, and it's just, it's bothersome. It's just bloody fucking bothersome. Hang on, little bug. This is just a, uh, your typical Brita water filter. Nothing special. I actually don't really like these at all. This is one of my, uh, my mom or my dad ended up buying the, one of these. There's a better model on the market called Alexa Pure. They make a uh, pitcher filter, you guys, that has a double cartridge. It's actually a really awesome unit. I have a lot of mixed opinions about these. Because these filters are dark, wet, and, you know, when things are dark and wet, they're a perfect bacteria breeding ground. And I also have some really suspicious uh, 
I'm not going to say that. I don't necessarily think everything that's in that cartridge is good. So, you know what? This refrigerator has a filter on it. So let's just get rid of some water from the fridge. But, you know, we've got to use our thinking caps, guys. Not everything's as black and white as you think it is. So, I've got some raw meat in this refrigerator that I might take out. I might consume it tonight. I'm not 100% sure. I know I've got some raw salmon. Yes. Now, a lot of people think that this is absolutely vile to eat raw seafood. Good quality raw salmon is going to go right to your brain, you guys. Right to your brain. Now, as I've said once, I'll say it again. One life lost. My brother caught this salmon, um, fuck, quite a while ago. And there are so many bags. I showed you guys in the What I Eat in a Day video of me eating the salmon, the freezer bag where this, that this came from, how big it was. And there's my brother's refrigerator or freezer is full of those from one salmon. You see, one life lost can produce quite a bit of food, you guys. Quite a bit of food. And, you know, all the grains that people are eating. Look at uh, Dr. Perlmutter's book, Grain Brain, for further information on the health detriments of gluten and grains. Everyone's eating gluten. And I see a lot of vegans doing this, a lot of vegetarians and omnivores eating gluten. Gluten is like the new thing. It's everywhere. Gluten is directly linked to mental illness, schizophrenia, psychosis, ladies and gentlemen, bad sleep. Gluten. So I'm a huge fan of Dr. Joel Wallach. As well as Dr. Peter Glidden, who works under her, worked under the wing of Dr. Joel Wallach. And what I've done for, for quite a while now, you guys, is I've... I've preached his good foods and bad foods list as like a primer. So if you want to know what to eat and what not to eat, look up Dr. Joel Wallach's good food list and bad food list. Get off all the fried fucking food. Get off all of the vegetables and seed oils and get on grass-fed butter. Some of the tropical oils are better to cook with, but just get on butter, you guys. Grass-fed butter. I mean, people are still using canola oil and grapeseed oil, and olive oil, and all this other crap. And occasionally, on a rare occasion, I'll consume some avocado oil or some uh, olive oil, but my intake of oils is practically nothing. And what's crazy, you guys, is that cooked, cooked, cooking with oils as well as eating oils is like the new thing. Everybody's doing it. I remember when I was younger, it was pretty much just like olive oil that people were talking about. I would go to the stores and the delis and they'd have like macadamia nut oils and truffle oils and things like that. But now like coconut oil is just everywhere. Palm oil, which is actually one of the healthier oils because it has vitamin E in it. But palm oil, coconut oil, sunflower oil, avocado oil. I don't ever remember avocado oil being on the shelves when I was like a young boy. Everything was just olive oil. And, you know, I, let's just see here. I'm not gonna show you the uh, label on this cooking spray. I do not use this, but let's just see if you can see that. You can't see it. So let me just read the fucking ingredients on this canola oil, non-GMO cooking and baking spray. Caution, flammable, contents under pressure. Read back panel carefully. Non-GMO canola oil, and then it's got asterisks next to it. Why does it have those little star things next to it? And why isn't there like a key on the back that tells you why there's those little stars? Automatically, I don't trust this shit. Um, Non-GMO soy lecithin, dimethyl silicone for anti-foaming, and propellant, propane, and isobutane. Contains soy. People use this shit all the time, you guys. All the time. So what is this? We've got some... Here's some vegetable oil. 
I don't use this. This is just in the house. We have a lot of stuff in these shelves that just sits there. Look at all the polyunsaturated fat in this. Eight grams of polyunsaturated fat in one tablespoon. The polyunsaturated fat content is largely what makes vegetable oil toxic. This stuff is rancid. I mean, Jesus Christ, perfect for pan frying, sauteing, chicken meats, fish, and vegetables. Perfect for baking, substitute for melted butter, margarine, or shortening. Vegetable oil is the... Look, let's look at the um, amount of heart disease that is spawned once the fucking vegetable oils hit the market, you guys. I mean, come on, get off the vegetable oils and the seed oils. Get on butter. Get off of fried foods. Get away from the gluten. Eat real food. Try to mimic what your ancestors did. It's that simple. So we've gone off on kind of a little tangent, but it's all relative, you guys. A little bit of coffee here. It's all relative. So my observations on cooked animal products versus raw animal products is that Cooked animal products taste better. Raw animal products don't taste as good, but they digest about a thousand times better and they make you feel better. I mean, the mood benefits and the antidepressive qualities of raw meat is remarkable, as well as the satiation. Now, if you look into the research of Ogenis von der Planets, the Weston Price, and a handful of others, You'll find that the fat soluble vitamins, the you know, beneficial components in raw meat are digested better for most people in their raw state. When you heat something that's raw, you rearrange and damage the molecular integrity of those foods. Now for some people, it increases digestive capabilities when you eat raw foods or cooked foods. But that's mostly, in my opinion, Plant foods. A lot of plant foods, because of the sheer amount of cellulose, people have a really difficult time breaking down raw cellulose, raw plant material. Whereas flesh, this is a hell of a lot closer to what you're made out of, folks. Your body is very clean. I mean, think about it. What is your body closer to? What is your protoplasm closer to? Beef or fucking, what's spinach? or garbanzo beans. Plant proteins have to go through an entire conversion process called the humanizing factor. Yes, there was some life loss to produce this food. I get it. I understand many people don't like that, but the plant's life was lost as well. So in my opinion, Raw animal foods far supersede cooked foods. I don't think that people should just jump into this though. I've been doing this for a while now and uh, I still have mixed opinions on certain things in regards to eating this way, like a raw primal diet. But I will say that the satiation, the feeling that you get from raw foods is just, it's it blows cooked, or from raw animal foods, it just blows cooked animal foods out of the, out of the, uh, out of the, uh, out of the picture completely. Yeah, it's just a night and day difference. A night and day difference, you guys. So what's really interesting too is when I started to eat raw flesh, I haven't worked out. I hadn't been, you know, it, I haven't really even been doing my nightly walk just because of how busy I've been. Um, so I wasn't really stimulating my muscles at all. Haven't really been doing much exercise, which isn't like me, but regardless of that, I was putting on muscle. I could actually feel it. And, uh, my family noticed it too. It's like, what are you doing? You're working out, you're losing weight, but you look, you're looking bigger. No, it was the increase in raw meat. And what's weird too, is that if you're sensitive to like your digestive processes, if you're sensitive to your body, if you know how to listen to your body, you can actually kind of feel these raw proteins weaving into your current proteins and like attaching to yourself and rebuilding yourself. It's very interesting. 
It's a very, very interesting thing, you guys. What are you doing, Dudley? Mm -mm. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. Just a, uh, just a little message or me checking in in regards to uh, raw animal foods versus cooked animal foods. If I had to pick one over the other, I wouldn't really know what to say at this point. I would probably pick raw, as long as I could get high quality, non-vaccinated, non-hormone injected animal foods, I'm going to go with the raw foods. But uh, anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up, you guys. I love you. May peace be with you all.